Hey, GovCon Giants family, your host, Eric Coffey, today. And today we bring a special guest, Miss Maria Martinez, who happens to be in town. And so she passed by, and I said, let's just jump on live today together. And so now, guess what? You're going to get two for one. And uh, it's good because she can help me with some of my sorrows. <laughs> Um, and uh, what I've been going through for the last 24 hours. Actually, it's been all week, pretty much 72 hours. So uh, I, you know, I thank her for joining us today here in beautiful South Florida. We're in Palm Beach County. So thank you so much. Welcome everyone that's joining us. Looking forward to tonight's conversation. Yvette, that's right. Where's our tribe at? So you got Maria, she's actually, she has her laptop here, as you see. And so she's on the laptop. She's still monitoring the chat, but she's also here in person. So if anybody wants to come up and talk to Maria and speak to her, this today will be your opportunity. So with all of that said, as always, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us and make sure to tell us who you are, right? As always, use this time as your opportunity to uh, not only network with fellow GovConers, future GovCon tractors, it's also your time to be in a place, in a space where people understand you, people understand what you're talking about, right? Because many of us can't talk to our family and friends about government contracting. So I see Nicole has already jumped the gun, not jumped the gun, she did the right thing, it's put in her, her company name, the city where she's at and her name because it's already on YouTube. So thank you, Nicole, for that. I'm going to go ahead and put Nicole up on the big screen. Welcome, Nicole Walsh. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to remember you, Nicole, very soon because you're the first one from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and actually, Nicole, today, uh, the conversation is actually regarding uh, my man. Look, I, hold on. Sorry, Nicole. One second. <laughs> I saw I saw something. Go Gators. That's right, baby. Go Gators. Thank you, Donald. That's that's more important than anything else you could have wrote today. Just go Gators. <laughs> I'm a Seminole, if you guys don't know. So I am more a uh, Go Knowles. But I will support the Gators. They they don't even say Go Knowles. We say it. We're you know what I've noticed? That Gators are very friendly people. So I give you guys that. Because everywhere you go, you you find a gator and all automatic you guys will go gator. Right. That's uh, if you if you know anything about Gator Nation, when we see each other in the streets, in the subway, at and out of the country, <laughs> we just say go gators. Like that's our thing. And so we, you know, I could be walking like arbitrarily somewhere down the street and somebody goes, Go gators. I say, Go gators. And that's it. That's our that's our hello, that's our hoorah, that's our what we're talking about today. So uh, 12 people watching. I only saw one person follow instructions, Nicole, who put in there the city, your industry, right? Um, and what did I say? City, industry, and your name, if it's not there. So. All right, guys. Um, so I just wanted to say hello to everyone out there. Um, as you know, my name is Maria, and I've been with GovCon for a couple of years now. So if you guys have any, like, I call them normal questions, basic questions, anything you guys want to know, like, that is why I'm here for. I started just like a lot of you guys, which is I knew nothing about government contracting, like absolute nothing. Maybe you guys that saw a war dogs know, knew, know a little bit more than what I did. So um, I've come into this journey of GovCon and it's been an amazing path um, and I've listened to what he's gone through this past week and and our GovCon community heard about it last night too and it's just you have to take a moment and breathe and just take it in and this is where you really believe that everything's going to happen for a reason and just keep on pushing through. So, yeah, and we'll get into that story later on. By the way, I just dropped in the chat the StreamYard link. So, again, I today, Wednesdays, why don't you have a contract Wednesdays? We like to get straight to it, get into the business, 
bring people on stage and you let us know what's going on, what's happening in your world. And then we're going to try to help solve that problem. And then today you can actually talk directly to Maria because Maria has her own sets of experiences that are different from mine. And so for me, um, I think that that's a, a whole nother element that, you know, a lot of times I'm lacking, I'm disconnected because the type of opportunities that I pursue are much different than the ones that Maria pursues and probably much different than the ones that you, all the folks out here listening are going to pursue. So again, please, 20 people watching at this point, drop in there, tell us your company name, tell us the city that you're from, your business. If it doesn't spell it out, your company name, why is that important? Because people are watching this chat. They're going to watch it in 2022, 2023, 2024, and you just don't know who you can connect with. And again, when we come on the, on these Wednesday calls like this, Tuesday is our members only session for our GovCon Giant students who are in our Academy 3.0 course. And so just last night we had Tasha Williams. Tasha was talk, discussing state and local contracting. Well, guess what? Oh yeah, Tasha, sold her first company to a private equity firm. And I didn't know that about her. So now you're getting a chance to hear from someone. By the way, her first business was uh, doing SEO marketing, like graphic design, web design, and marketing. So she actually sold that first business to a private equity firm, and her and her husband decided to come back in, recreate another business, and start helping people. And so she was. She came on, and she she did a private session with our group, because that's what we're doing all year. We're bringing in guest speakers each and every month to talk to all of you in a private session. And, and everyone got a chance to get it, to ask Tasha any questions about her business, about her contracts. She put in there, where does she find her opportunities? She put in there how she finds them, what is things that she looks for? How does she find her partners? How does she find her teams? And that and all of that stuff. So it was really amazing. And I sat in on the call and even myself having listened to someone else right? I've never sold a business. Like I never sold a company and she sold a company. So I, that was just pretty remarkable to me. So again, in the chat, I put in here the link for you to come up stage. So don't be shy. We're going to have a conversation, a dialogue. We're going to talk about my horrific experience this past week, what happened to me, but also I want to give you an opportunity. If anyone out there has questions to come on live, jump up here, we'll put you backstage and then we'll bring you up and you can ask myself a real question. So uh let's see who else we have up here so let me just put some folks on screen elias consulting tampa florida welcome jeff bram northern virginia consulting my man antoine consulting people staff solutions aurora colorado we have a new person here. Welcome, New York City consultant. Welcome, thank you for joining us today. Especially all your consultants out there. Um, if you guys are just starting, that is how I actually started in this field. Um, my first contract was 15,000 and tomorrow I am actually starting a, two projects that total $950,000. So the way that you scale is how I've been doing it. And again, I started as a consultant um, helping other small businesses get into this field. And the client that I'm working with on this um, contract that's starting tomorrow, we started with like replacing the floor at a Coast Guard. So that is how we are growing our business. And that's how I am in turn becoming more knowledgeable in this field. You know, Joe Profit, we actually, uh, it's funny, I met with someone today that does life insurance. And also I've got a guy out of Arizona who's looking at those electric vehicle charging stations that GSA just put out that big, they're, they're looking for vendors to cover the entire country because of the, the plan that Biden put out, that infrastructure plan includes electric vehicle charging stations. So that's something that's huge. I mean, I think they put $500 million into that alone over the next four years. So that's a huge deal. Uh, let's see who else we have out here. With gas prices going up, I better have an electric car soon. Oh, with well, gas <laughs> prices going up, everyone should be driving electric cars soon. Uh, Gilbert and Sons procurement office warehouse medical supplies. You know, Gilbert, and again, I'm look again. If you don't put your information here, I can't talk to you. So if the people drop their information, I'm going to drop the knowledge and experience I have because I'm I'm dealing with contractors every single day. So 
uh, Giver and Sons Office Warehouse Supplies. We actually, one of our students, he actually had a call with Sedesco. Do you know Sedesco? I think you do because Sedesco does actual facilities and they provide supplies to the government all over the country. They're the largest entity that does that. They're a $28 billion company and they're looking for small businesses. So you may want to look at to Sedesco. They're looking to partner with small businesses. And especially if you tell me this, that you're contract ready. So uh, I know this because one of our students had a call with them this past week. Who else do we have in here, Miss Maria? And those people that say they're contract ready, that means they're actually part of our community because they know they better be contract ready at this point. Um, because another thing that we offer is we do learning sessions and these past few months, that's all we've been focusing on getting you contract procurement ready and that includes a lot from learning your about your going through your case statement your profile everything that we tell you and we pull up here because that is what people focus on you have to focus on the foundations and making sure your business or your client's business is putting that good face forward that you know what you're talking about you know what you are you know your specialties everything like that because Right now is when everything's about to hit because we are in March and that's where things start rolling. And you want that company to be contract ready. You need to be ready at this point. So Barnabas, software development and construction, two uh, <laughs> very different things there, Barnabas. Uh, you know, not that you can't do them, but hopefully that you have really strong partners in each. Also, you didn't tell me where you're located, so it's really hard for me to pinpoint what to su suggest or recommend. However, if you're in software development, um, you know, there are a lot of state opportunities in software development that need your help and assistance. Uh, at the government level, unless you have a team or can put together a large team, it'll be it's going to be much more difficult. And again, we, look, we all need teams, by the way. Let me not mistake anyone. Part of the conversation last night was we all need teams. So you got to have teams and you got to be able to trust your teams. But uh, particularly when you're talking about software development, I think it would be easier for someone like yourself to start out at the state level. Just you know, recommendation. Uh, let's see. Hot Queen Lee says, David Smith, you're in her neck of the woods. Okay. Skyhaven, Odessa Tech starting out looking into joint venture with other companies for set asides. Okay. No, and Jake, feel free to come up to the stage. Let's talk about it. Anybody else? Let's see. Key Kelvin West, affordable auto sales. Julian Harris, DC. While he's going through it, I'm going to put the link on the chat just for anybody that wants to join in. You're more than welcome to. We actually are wanting you to come and talk to us. All right, look, Jake says, I need help with that. There's a set aside for electric vehicle chargers at VA, 10 to 50 miles, EV charge infrastructure companies out of California. I said a phone. <laughs> well, actually, Jake, uh, so I was working with the company that does electric vehicle charging stations up in the Northeast. I don't have their name, but if you stick around, uh, by the time we finish today, I can hopefully pull that up, that name for you, because I do have it in my email. It's just I want to make sure that I, we talk to the people about my story and my experiences as well. Uh, Gilbert says, how do you spell Sodexco? Let me see if I can find it for you, Gilbert, as well. And, uh, but, so let me, so what happened to me this week was, um, and again, if you already, if you're part of our group, you heard this story. And uh, let me get this information for Gilbert real quick. Hey, Leilani. So, uh, I, I get excited when I see our people on here because it just means that there are really um, submerging selves in all aspects of where to learn. Because you learn something on Tuesday calls, you learn something from the course, and you learn something from here. So, seeing you guys out here, it it's it makes me happy. It tells me that you guys are actually wanting to do this. So, Chris. Um, you said Hydro Contract in Seymour, Connecticut. Is that the same as Nicole Walsh that was on here earlier? Are you guys, because I mean, I see Seymour, Connecticut, two people from the same place. Um, let's see. Underground Utility Construction Specialized in Sewer Storm Water Repair. So, yeah, we're doing a lot of projects up in that area. So, um, 
Oh, same people. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's good. Now, so what happened? Uh, so this past week, and I'm not I'm not going to put the specific contract up here, but this past week, we got the result of a bid. Let me pull something up for you guys. Oh no! Hold on one second. It's not pulling up. See if I can pull this up. I mean, I gotta bring on this other screen over here. By the way, being behind the scenes and seeing how everything works, it's confusing. It's like government contracting. <laughs> like I think once you get it, it, it becomes normal. But right now, it's like he has like all these screens and things like that. So it's pretty cool to see the back ways of doing it. Okay. All right. Cool. There you go. Look at that. See, Maria, you get oh. to see. All right, look at that. You get to see what I actually see. Um, let's pull this up. And we're gonna talk about this today. This is, so this is actually taken from a book that I have from freaking 2009, Proposal Preparation. And I still have this book from 2009, believe it or not. And uh, I pulled out a section today because we're going to discuss that section today. And the reason why it's important is because of what just happened to me. So real quick, just a backstory. We, I put together a team to go after a five-year contract that was $250 million. And um, we didn't have the bonding and we didn't have the past performance. To qualify, so I put together a team. I partnered with another organization that had the past performance and the bonding to go after this opportunity. And so, um, it was a year that we were working on this. It was a, a year, and a few weeks ago, uh, no, we're, we're in March. So yeah, so in January we received our first result. <laughs> Thanks, Yvette. I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> This is important information, okay, about government contracts, Yvette. This does not make me a hoard. I'm keeping my learning materials, my study guys that now I can take and help you guys. Thank you very and much. And that's not the oldest resource he has. Either. I've got a bunch of resources. Uh, I think that book in my background, this, this one right there, I think that one's from 2009 also. But nevertheless, um, so yeah, so we, we, we put together a team, we bid the project, and then... The government issues us a report of some deficiencies to make corrections and resubmit. They do that for all of the participants. Uh, we resubmit and then they make the award notice and we didn't win. And so we're like, well, how do we not win? So, and let me just share this with you. We'll go through, I wanna show you something and we'll talk about, oh, sorry, hold on. Let me pull this back on the screen. So this is actually a source selection process. Yvette, I'm sure I'm happy I have this document so we could talk about it today, right? And so in this process, this is essentially what we went through uh, with the government. So we saw we actually saw when they did the source selection, when they did the draft RFP, pre-solicitation, we were part of all of that, the formal RFP. We submitted our proposal here, uh, and then they did their technical evaluation cost and for past performance. Right. Then they did evaluation notices and then they opened up for discussions. And then basically we got down to the revised final proposals and then they did a final evaluation. Right. And then they did this award. And then when we didn't get it, we requested a debrief. You see there on the last thing on our debrief. So. Now we're saying to ourselves, well, what happened? So the debrief. Right. And everyone who does not win a federal project should request a debrief. You are not penalized. You're not frowned upon. This is standard. As you see from my, as a vet says, hoarding document from 2009, it still lists debriefing. That's standard protocol. So we requested a debrief. And in the debrief, we went through our evaluation factors. And uh, so let me just show you another example on here 
So for those that don't know what a debrief is, um, it's basically you're going to talk to the contracting officers and the people that went through your proposals, and they're going to tell you what your opportunities, what you did good in and that you passed, and what are those things you missed or you could have improved on. So let me share, I'm going to share this particular document just so you can get examples. So we went through, and here's a, this is not the actual solicitation we pursued. I did want to share, but I want to share it with folks just to have a real life example. This is another opportunity that we did that we went after. Um, and so here is what evaluation factors look like. And it says like technical factor one, sub factor B, bonding, sub factor C, sub factor D. So we had on our particular uh, opportunity, we had five evaluation factors. And in those five evaluation factors, that's very similar to this. What happened was they, on our first evaluation factor was our actual past performance, our, our projects that were recent and relevant, that were similar in nature to what the government was asking us to bid. And then all the other evaluation factors were our technical proposal, our price proposal, uh, the PPQs, which are past performance questionnaires, uh, any CPARs ratings and things like that. So now, what happened was evaluation factor one, which again, we'll go back to like this particular screen here. So if I could zoom in for everyone. Okay, so evaluation factor number one, what the government did said was part of the requirement was that we had to submit a teaming arrangement or a letter of commitment from our partner company. And so what happened was the person that was responsible for submitting our package submitted our proposal, and then they submitted the teaming arrangement separately. The teaming arrangement they submitted after the time that the proposal was due. So let's say, for example, the proposal was due at 2 p.m. They submitted the teaming arrangement at 2.04 p.m. So it's four minutes past the time. Well when it was four minutes past the time, the government did not allow it to be accepted or considered as part of our bid package. And so they excluded that from being credited towards our submission. So that made our first technical factor essentially unacceptable. And if any of your technical factors are unacceptable, all five of our technical factors were deemed unacceptable. And so since our factors were all deemed unacceptable, we lost the opportunity. So now I know I said that really fast and it probably seemed complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break it down. Basically, they had five different factors, meaning five different volumes of things they have to answer. And that is what they get evaluated on. Um, everything was good. Two, three, four, and five are awesome. Um, number one, they did good they show that they're capable and able but there's one part to that which is you have to put in your teaming agreement um the person that sends in the all the proposal to the contracting officer have you always see that things are due it's due on this date by 2 p.m eastern let's say and this person sent in one part of it but then Four minutes later, he sends in one of the parts. Um, the government says, four minutes too late. Sorry, so sad. Um, that means you're disqualified. So no, they didn't say we're disqualified uh, readingly, no. What they said was that your evaluations marked unacceptable. <laughs> Which, and yes, in layman's terms means you're disqualified. Disqualified, not getting the contract, not available, not acceptable, everything of the above. You did not get it because you're four minutes too late. So all the other criteria, everything else on here, we met. Okay, so every single criteria we met was acceptable. Our pricing, our technical, our write-up, everything was acceptable, except the fact that we, we did not submit our agreement on time and so they could not count it as part of our submission because it was late so they can't count anything that's after the time so therefore we didn't meet that criteria because we didn't provide it and so they threw us out and this was a five area one of them has never been to the area 
And so ultimately, this was our backyard. This is what we do. And we essentially, uh, out of that $250 million, we stood to do about $50 million in, in contracts, which when you break it down, $50 million in contracts, um, it, you know, it breaks down to, I don't even want to go through it, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot, right? So uh, at the end of the day, I figure it's about $2 million that we actually, um, that we've lost in terms of profit, not $2 million in contracts, in terms of profit uh, that I personally lost as a result of this, this mistake. And I think one of the big parts that you're forgetting is how long did you work on this? Uh, so we five we, factors. Um, so we put in, so we've been, we've been following this opportunity for 18 months because again, we went through literally, we went through all of this, right? And so this isn't no fast stuff here, right? What you're seeing on the screen is not fast. We, we tracked this from the time it was source of sought, which was not last year, the year before last, it was source of sought. So we tracked it from source of sought all the way through pre-solicitation, all the way through solicitation, and then to the bid process. So we literally tracked this thing the whole way through and submit it. So we probably invested $60,000 on this. And in terms of time, I probably spent on the right, just writing it, I probably spent about 60 hours writing. But in terms of how much time I spent on it all together, probably several, couple hundred hours, just because of flying back and forth, um, putting it together, meeting with teams of people, even bringing out subcontractors, yeah, to be four minutes late. Who turned it in four minutes late? The, the person that was our teaming partner, they are, uh, the person on their end that was responsible is the one that turned it in four minutes late. And so the, the actual, so the lesson, the lesson is here. This is the this is the lesson, right? Uh, so Charles, actually, that's a good question. And Yvette, this is something that that last night in a group we talked to, we brought up about the protesting. So we did speak to several attorneys, and they recommended. They said that because it was late, and that the government's made a decision, we would likely lose the protest. So um, double broken hearted. <laughs> so I I did get that call today, Charles. Uh, we did we did speak about that. Um, and we, we explored the opportunity of protesting, but they said that we would lose and spend a lot of money. So I have a few questions that people are putting in. How soon do you request a debrief? The debrief, I believe, I have to go look at it, but I think the FAR says three days after your notification date. Is, so that goes into the but it's, it, there, but it's a don't quote me because it's in the FAR. It says it specifically. I'll pull it up while we're talking. And when doing so, how do you formulate the questions? Is it written or is it an open dialogue? Um, so for us, we actually had an open dialogue. And so here, let me, I don't know if I can share this on the screen. But yeah, the debrief here, it says, I'll drop it in here. But yes, yeah, three days after the date, which you received the notice that you were not the successful winner. So you have three days after they tell you, and for him, it was an open dialogue conversation. Yeah, so we've, I've had two, so I've had actually, this is my second, like, major debrief, because the little stuff I don't really request it on, no, but you should. Um, and both of them, and which is strange, why see what you said about, like, they, the, the KO told you was LPTA, mm. which, that's a very strange situation i've been told that actually i requested a debriefing and they told me because it's lpta that it was just um somebody else came in less like 300 dollars less than me interesting so again like i said i you know for for us um with this particular one the the contracting officer got on the phone with us and she explained everything to us okay. and then on the first one that i had the they they also came they also came on the phone and explained everything to us but not only that they they gave us like this written report of our debrief so it was very thorough but again these were Matox and Mac contracts so they were all you know this one was two fifty million the last one was like fifty million okay when why did they let you go through the whole evaluation process if you had been disqualified on one factor. You know, that's a very good question, actually. That's a that's an excellent question. 
And I don't know that the name. I don't even know why they did that. To be honest with you, I, that to me is the question that. Where is that at? Um, yeah, I, I copied and pasted. Okay. Them. Yeah, I don't know. Be, that was a that's an ex oh, excellent Barnabas question. Barnabas Ochola asked. Yeah, no, Barnabas. I want no. I just want to put up on the screen. Yeah. Um, right before my broken heart. <laughs> yeah, Barnabas. No, that's a great question. I don't know why they let us go through the entire process if we were disqualified for one factor. So, in in, in my opinion, Barnabas, that almost says like we had an opportunity, but uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, we, you know, you know, it, it, it came, that's what it came down to. And they told us no. Charles, it says, yeah, it could take them a long time to go through your emails, but your emails are time stamped. And if that said 201 or after, then it's like, it's useless. And so and Charles, you, you know, it. you're right. And so a good thing that I want everyone to, to learn from this lesson a couple things, and that's what we're, that's why we're here to talk about this. I'm not here because I want people's sympathy. I'm here because I want you to learn. Um, I want you to know who you're dealing with, the type of people, the person that you're making responsible for submitting your document, uh, the fact that you should be checking up on them, even if they're a large organization, right? Because even large organizations are ran by sometimes the people that are pushing the final button are inept or unqualified or lazy, or um, what do you call that? They, they're, what do you call people that wait till the last minute? Procrastinators. Procrastinators, right? So any, I mean, that doesn't, just because someone works for a large organization doesn't make them not these things. And so I actually, we knew this about the person that they had a lot of these traits and we still, which is my fault, not my fault, cause I couldn't have done anything different except harass them, but we still, could it, we we still allow that person to be the one to send in such an important package, even knowing that they had these qualities? So that's where I kind of you know if, if I I'm a kind of person, yeah, it's easy to point a finger and because he did do it. But if I say Eric, what could I have done differently? I could have harassed the hell out of them to make sure it was done the day before, and I could have just like blew up their phone like, did you send a bit? 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 Is it in yet? Like it's one o'clock. It's you know it's one thirty. Like you know, do you need me to send it in? So we could have been more on top of them. Um, we took it for granted that that this was as important to to this person as it was to us. And so you know, just being a a person or individual who has who I have been through a lot of hardships in my life. Um, you know, I, I do learn that how what, what could I have done to improve the situation and make myself better? And why am I sharing this with you? It's because I want all of you to know if you are also dealing with an individual person who you know has those same traits, do not put the final push the button, send the email, don't put that in their hands. Even if they're based based on rank and file, that's what they do. You need to be on them and harassing them and staying on their butts until they get it done. Because you have a vested interest in this. And I have a vested interest in this. So Yvette says, be on him like a bad rash. That's right. Be on like a bad rash. Let <laughs> and, me And that's the thing also. Like I was wondering, I'm like, you would think that you could trust these big old companies to do things right they've they've been doing this for so many years and i guess you you're the one that tell us make sure you go through your proposal make sure you print everything out highlight things make sure everything is done send it in a day before just in case because sometimes they tell you you're missing this or maybe this or something and i don't know it's like you can't trust the big people the small people I, like, again i think it comes down to humans right we're humans we're flawed Right. Um, and so I think it comes down to we're dealing with people and humans. And so whenever you're dealing with human beings, we they make mistakes. And so you have to just know the people that you're working with and also know who. <clears throat> right. There you go. Yvette, trust, but verify. You just got to know who you're working with and then who you want to basically put in that position. So, my man, Eric, what's going on? How are you, sir? Pretty good. Pretty good. Can you hear me? OK. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so so his first name is Eric, last name is Thomas. I'm Gilbert Thomas in the chat. Ah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so, so I'm, I'm the owner Gilbert and Sons Procurement LLC um, office, warehouse and medical supplies um, located in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin here. Milwaukee. Yeah. Okay. My brother-in-law is from Milwaukee. His whole family is up there. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so just, and, and again, I, you know, I was the one that did say I'm, I'm uh, contract ready. And again, I did get that Maria, I, you know, I did hear you say that last, um, but so, you know, my understanding of contract ready is so I have everything set up. You know, I'm already registered and Sam, I have the Dunn's cage, everything. I have those set up. And I know, Eric, that you talk a lot about um, when they go to your SBA profile. I forget the exact place where they go. Um, it's the um, yep, DSBS. DSBS, right. And, and everything is complete in there. Um, but, you know, and I've bid it on contracts. What is it? Unison Marketplace. And, and, and I'm still not getting any traction. Um, I don't have any past performance. But again, with the subcontracting part, you know, I'm hoping that subcontracting will be the way for me. Um, you know, the other day, too, I did catch a video of yours where you gave about seven pointers, uh, you know, business development, um, networking, market research, um, the events and learning. But as far as so, again, business development for myself, what what exactly would that be business development? Um, so let's go through. OK, um, tell me because you said a lot there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. So tell me again. Your business does what primarily? I heard medical supplies. So so it's, it's pretty much office the warehouse and the medical supplies. And then I'll say, so. Okay, wait, when you say office, warehouse, medical supplies, tell me, what does that mean? Office being, you know, paper, pencils. I'm sorry? Yeah, so paper, pencils, the folders, staples, anything that you would use in an office. Okay. The the warehouse would be the same thing. So warehouse, I guess, boxes, we're talking a warehouse um, containers. Okay, so um, providing product. Yes. So um, typically, like something like that, especially those standard type of products, uh, the government, I see that would buy them off of GSA, like a GSA e-buy, right? Okay. And so the, the only, not the only way, but one way, someone says no sound. Who has no sound? Someone put no sound. I hear you. But um, do you guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can, I can still hear you. Okay. All right. No, someone just types no sound in the chat. Uh, when you're when you're dealing with products, specifically those particular products, that would pro- more than likely go through GSA eBuy um, or GSA just GSA in period in general, just because those are items that they buy regularly and frequently. But I, I what I find difficult is how can you add value to something that like a paper or a pencil that you know. I mean, I could, anyone can buy from Staples or any of the big box stores. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't really see where you can add a lot of value in, in, in providing that good or service because any there's 44 people watching right now. By the way, you better have 44 likes out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. We better have 44 likes. Uh, you know, any one of us could go out and qualify to resell those items. So there's really, you know, the, 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 there's no there's no like barrier to entry. Right, the barrier to entry is very low on that. If you were to look at, let's say we go to GSA right now, and we identify companies who are reselling those items, what could you offer them? You, you know, I guess to be honest, there, there's nothing special that I could bring them. You know, I mean, I guess, and that's that's being honest. You know, no, that's what and that's what we want, right? So, the, the, we're here to solve, like to to come in and to help you, right, with the solution, right? So. Okay, so you can't have, you can't offer them anything. So why did you pick that particular business? Well, because I thought it would be something, I guess, easy entry to get into, you know, um, you know, that's, that's why I picked it, you know, it's, you know, with that, and then the fact that you can get a, a, you can get an account with Uline or Granger, which I have, you know, so I figured, okay, I can get that. With I know I think with both of them you do get supplier credit in the beginning so I figured well let me start off here and just kind of work my way up. And and so what I, what what have you seen the videos that I've done with my boy John, who did some of the city contracts? No, I haven't seen that that particular video, but I know you I know how you speak about the the local contracts. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I right, um, but because 
remember, I, I changed my tune uh, last year because the government, the federal government has been pouring money into the states and the local agencies. And so they've been able to sustain small businesses for the last two years because they've been getting federal dollars as a result of COVID and all these other grant programs. So the federal government has really bailed out all the states and locals. So it has been sort of a cash cow for a lot of people lately. Um, we didn't anticipate that, right? Four years ago, we couldn't have anticipated that the government was going to come in and step out and issue three rounds of bailout funds, but they did. And so after three rounds of bailouts later, right, uh, the states and the local governments are flush with cash. And so you can make money there. Now, going back to what I was going to say about John, one of the things that John did, which I there's a video that I put that says state and local contracts are booming and you can fulfill them without past performance. He literally went after what's called pool contracts, P-O-O-L. So pool contracts, you're in Milwaukee. Yeah. You go to the Milwaukee city, find out where they have a list of contracts, right? Pools, P-O-O. So there are these long, longer term contracts that you got to be pre-approved to get on the list. And then from that, he found out which ones did not have so many vendors on it. And then he went and got supplier credit with those accounts where there was pool contracts that had little to no vendors. Maybe they had three vendors. So when you go to a site visit, because at the city level, site visits are mandatory. At the federal level, site visits are not mandatory. So you go to a city bid, right, with a mandatory site visit, and only you and one other person shows up, you got a 50-50 chance to win. Okay. Even if 10 people on the list, only the people who showed up can can bid. And again, you said pool as in P-O-O-L? P-O-L, pool contract. Like the one you swim in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, cause, cause I've, I've been in back and forth communication with, uh, here in Milwaukee, it's the, um, yeah, Milwaukee County, but I'll be sure that I'm going to send them an email to see if there's such a thing. You know, I would, I, I mean, you could send them an email, right. But that's also being reactive. I, you could go, I, again, in the video, we show you where we go on the website and you look at, because they, maybe they don't call it pool. Right. Right. You get me? They're like, Oh no, we don't have pool contracts. And then you're going to be like, Oh, they don't have it. Right. <laughs> You have to say it that way too. <laughs> right. You know, like that's the kind of stuff that people like. Remember, Eric, this you dealing with county workers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so some, of, some, right. some of the emails that I've got from them show me exactly that, you know. So again, and I ain't never been to Milwaukee, but I know that these people are built to save all across the country. Right. So they're gonna say, no, we don't have pool contracts. You're gonna just go away. They do have it. They may call it something different. That's the terminology that we use here. All it means is the government are buying this particular goods and service over and over each year. So they they sim simply they pre-qualify vendors, they put them on a list on this vendor pool, and then the people in that within that vendor list gets to bid on those types of procurements. That's it. That's all it is. So they may call it doesn't matter what they call it. But it's what they do, right? It's the vehicle that they use. It's a pre- qualified list of vendors that can bid certain opportunities. You, We have it here in Miami-Dade. I'm not Miami-Dade anymore, but in Miami-Dade and Palm Beach and Broward, we have it publicly on our website. So you can go in and look at it and see how many companies are on that list. And if you see a list with five companies, you can freely put your name. You could go to some of the site visits and see how many people show up. And you might be surprised. With only five people on the list, there's probably only going to be two people show up. Yes, Barnabas, they're similar to purchasing groups, correct. So, Eric, too, with, with the uh, the company, that the name that you gave me, Sedesco, um, now, would that still kind of work? You know, I contact them again. No, or would it you're not ready for them. You don't have anything. You, you got to be, um, again, you're not ready for someone like that. You got to actually have done work. Before... Before anyone reaches out to any of these big companies, you got to have done work. You got to have some experience. And it doesn't mean past performance federal. It just means you have to have done contracts. And you have to have, because when these people talk to you, they want to know how many contracts have you done, the size of the contracts, how big is your team, right? Because you have to add value to them as well. They can't just, you can't expect, they're not going to just, you know, teach you everything. You got to have something to come to the table with. Okay. So I, for me, give, listening to what you're saying, um, if you, and again, 
So those kind of products might do much better locally. Because the people at the federal level got that. They already understand that stuff. That's not, they do it all day long. But at your local area, there may be one or two people that do paper and pencils and stuff. Okay. You get me? Just a handful of people probably do that. And maybe they've been doing it for 30 years. And so no one challenges them because they know Mr. Johnson, you know, supplies all the paper for the city hall. Mrs. Johnson supplies all the pens and paper for the commissioners. You know, one of my best friends did COVID testing specifically for state officials. And, and that was his contract. So, again, you have at the something like that where you don't have a big differentiator than other folks. You may want to, at the very least, localize it down. Because you don't have a significant differentiator. If you had a much more of a, if you had, for example, I think it was Barnabas that said he was a software development company, then that's more of a specialty. Now you could go higher because you got a specialty. But with something like products, I would I would come back down to the city level. I wouldn't even go state. I would go to the city. And then even in uh, Wisconsin, right, um, I would look at some other municipalities around Wisconsin. How many municipalities are in Wisconsin? Do you have any idea? Uh, right off top, uh, can, can tell you right off top, but if, I know if, Milwaukee, Milwaukee being one of the biggest ones. Right. So again, but it doesn't matter of size. If you've got 50 municipalities, that's a lot of people that you could talk to where you could get some past performance. Okay. Definitely. And Appreciate so, it. yeah. And I, and I think the competition will be, I know it'll be much less. I know it. Cause people are not looking at that kind of stuff. I, I, have you ever been to any of those small cities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is this? And what? No, you think you got people out there like nobody they're trying to really go after those contracts. Okay, okay. Nobody trying to do that stuff. So no, listen. Thank you for coming on. I mean, I I, I love the dialogue. I love the engagement, and um, and because again, I want to know where people are at and and how we can help. And so again, now once you've done that and you've done some contracts and you've got some experience doing contracts. Then what's going to happen to you, you're going to find out where your strong suit is, right? Where you're strong, where you're weak, where you, you know, you're competitive in terms of your pricing and numbers. You don't know any of that right now. You don't know how competitive you are in price compared to anybody else. No, no, no. I mean, I, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be able to gauge it. No. So this is how you're going to gauge it. Gotcha. This, is how you, this is how you would gauge that. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So yeah, no, um, like I said, right now, the way that the government keeps pouring money out and uh, as fast as our money is getting ready to evaporate, you know, <laughs> you, you might as well go after those contracts. You might as well. Okay. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you, Gilbert. Appreciate you, man. Bye. All right. Who else? So. I just put the link on there. Yeah, no, and, and again, for everyone out here who, if you if you are in a space or an industry, and I'm actually, and I'm happy Gilbert came up here today, because if you are in a space or an industry where you don't have a differentiator, then it might make more sense for you to look at your local area, right, and find out where, and again, someone said it best. Someone said it, hold on. Right, like a purchasing group. So it it would behoove you to look at that video that I posted on state con city contracts, uh, where I show you how do we identify these purchasing groups at the local levels, and you essentially you can look at all of them across the board, find the ones that has the least amount of participants, and then find the ones with the least amount of participants, you then pre-qualify your entity to provide that service, right? Like whatever it is, paper, pencils, you know, microphones, cameras, whatever it is. And then from there, you can now, because again, on these city bids, there are a lot of times they are mandatory site visits. So if you go to a site visit to look at what it is that you have to do and only two people show up, now you have a 50-50 chance of bidding. So I think that's a much easier approach if you don't have any differentiators, excuse me. I put the link for the video that he's talking about inside the chat. Another thing is people that um, do products, even like someone like Mike,
that does aviation parts, he says, and he does it through DLA, that they put out 200 a day to get the, the what he's gotten. So if you're on those competitive sites like Unison, DLA and all that, like you just don't put one or two and hope to right. win. You have right. to do it in bigger quantities and hope you get one out of all those nights that you put in. Right, right. And S. Bryant is, very, is right. Um, you can add value from issues that arise with products that they're buying. But I think I don't, it doesn't sound like to me that Eric wants to go dig it into that research, right? To find out what that was. So, but you're right. Absolutely. If, um, so if, if how many people remember MEBS? MEBS? Okay. Mm -hmm. So MEBS that worked for us, our resource specialist, after Maria moved on and then MEBS came on, he, that was exactly what he did. He provided the, those place shooting targets for a municipality in New York. And it's exactly what you said as Brian, he, because the previous vendor was, they always had the contracts, they were providing them, they delivered them and some of them would be broken and they just kind of dropped them off and they had a drop shipped. He actually physically, when he got his first order, he physically took them to the government. He went through the boxes to see whichever one, how many were broken. And then he ordered and replaced all the broken ones. Whereas the previous entity, they never even met with the government. They had it bought, they bought it from a supplier, dropped the shipment to their office, and then told them to call customer service. So you're absolutely correct. You can add value from the issues that arise, but that would take a lot more homework and a That's lot more. Good to do. customer service. Yeah. And he was like early twenty. So he's not Yeah, he was twenty four at the time. So he took it upon themselves and just thought beyond what is expected. Right, right. Yeah, no, he, I mean, he was going over and above because he was trying to make a name for himself and uh, prove that he could do it. Yes, Antoine, look at the pool contracts in your area because, again, uh, my buddy John did a million dollars last year off of just pool contracts. So he's actually went on to start other uh, businesses and other streams of income using reinvesting the money he made doing this. And Colin, as you know, Colin goes after small contracts and they add up. And, you know, he was able to buy a house last year using small contracts. So, it, I mean, it works. It all adds up, right? Oh, yeah. that's And that's what I said. I started with small contracts. I told you guys my first contract was $15,000, which was changing 150 linear yards of a chain link fence and, like, replacing, like, two or three lights. And then I went out to 29000 And then I went out to 49000 so I just stepped up little by little and um, ended up with like, yeah, they're still small compared to what Eric does, but that's just my cup of tea. Those smaller contracts, I'm able to get in, get out, and make what I need and keep on going. So I like small contracts. All right. By the way, I just dropped in the chat again the invite for people to come up on stage and talk with us. Right. Again, this is not a one way form. We want dialogue from folks out here. Uh, Charles says, do local state agencies advertise contract information like federal? Yes, they do, Charles. In fact, um, there last night, to, uh, Tasha put in there a couple things that where they advertise. You can if you register for. So we actually during COVID, we won a bunch of PPE contracts with state government and I, we got registered with, I don't know, 25 states. Because you have to register with each individual state. And once we registered with the state, they put us on their bidders list and they would email us with opportunities that came out that match what we're looking for. The other thing is uh, Demand Star, or it used to be BidSync. Uh, that's a service that you can pay for annually that will allow you, will, that will send you state solicitations. And then at the city level, the local contracts, you have to, again, you have to sign up and be a part of whatever their programs are, and they'll put you on their vendors list. I still receive emails from Miami Dade County, and I haven't bid a project for Miami Dade County in 12 years. And I'm still on the email list. I guess they don't unsubscribe. <laughs> no, they, don't, they just keep adding us on there. We got to die to get off. They're like, oh, we have this many people on our list. Yeah, they just add us on there. Here, I'll put the links in there, what Tasha gave us, um, just because sharing is caring and we want everyone to be successful and we're not about hoarding information. <laughs> so those are the three sites that she talked about. 
Um, I remember using BitSync when we did that PPE contracts, just because that's how we were looking for contracts right. on. But it is, it's actually really easy. It's very similar to Sam.gov, but it's very, it's very user friendly. It's very easy. They send you like announcements depending on what filters you choose and things like that. Okay. All right, Lilani, this one's for you. Any advice to securing contacts for workforce and personal development for prisons or prison ranching program? Well, the uh, I know that we've seen opportunities for prison programs on terms of personal development. They put out a huge opportunity last year that we actually submitted a source of sought. And um, it's funny, you know, people always ask me like as if I'm like an encyclopedia <laughs> of contracts. <laughs> and look, I don't know every, by the way, for everybody watching, I don't know every contract out there, okay? That's why I tell everyone to do their market research. Because I don't know every single contract. Like just because I didn't see it doesn't mean it didn't come out, right? So um, the thing is this, uh, we did see last year uh, something that we responded to. They were looking for personal development for prisoners, but they wanted to, to have a training program that was with, with ex-prisoners, the ones doing the actual training. So they wanted, uh, uh, you had to be an ex-prison, like the person that were doing the facilitating the training had to be ex-prisoners was like the pre-qualifications. But again, when we talk about workforce, uh, we've done workforce contracts. Uh, all that stuff is state level, right? So the workforce stuff that I always did was state level. I worked for South Florida Workforce. Uh, workforce One was the areas here in Florida. And so those organizations, and again, I'm sure you have them in your local areas, uh, they were already kind of plugged in. And uh, you could volunteer to, to go to their meetings and be part of their boards. And that's what I did. Uh, we also have someone that helps with, um, oh my goodness, she does housing and, and places pe persons. She has the contract to do the housing for uh, prisoners that are re-entering like society. And so she does the housing placement for them. She has that contract. So I know about workforce contracts. I know about housing placement for prisoners and homeless. And I've seen personal development contracts from prison. But the personal development stuff was at the federal level. The workforce stuff I saw at the city level. And the other programs, the housing placement program that I saw was at the local level as well. So um, It's funny you say you don't know everything on top of your head, that you're not an encyclopedia or Wikipedia, but you kind of know a whole lot more than other people. Because <laughs> I was doing the video today because it's like I was doing – does the government buy what I sell? I was doing it in Spanish today. And my first line that I said is like, everyone comes to us like, hey, Maria, hey, Eric, does the government buy what I sell? And I was like, you guys want us to get the answer just like that, that we just automatically know. So it's like for us to show you how to go into that research of if the government buys what I sell. And it takes like 15 minutes at most. And you could have a bigger idea if your product or service actually is good to sell to the government. Yeah, no, no, no. So again, I, I hope that helps. I know it's kind of long-winded, but um, you know, the, I, I have seen those opportunities, but I was not actively pursuing them, but I, I, I have seen them. Um, and again, it does involve doing a research, but we have, I know we have two people, like I said, Lalani comes to my brain and she's on here, Lalani. Right. Um, she does workforce programs and training. Uh, I have I want a grant to do workforce training in my past former life. Uh, and then we have another student that actually does the placing of the and she's got contracts right now for placing of veterans, homeless and prisoners. And she's the one that's, she's always asking if you have a place to place these people, especially in Miami-Dade County. like please get in contact with her. So if you have somewhere in Miami-Dade County that you're able to open up that home or that place for those people, um, just send me an email, maria at govcongiants.com, and I'll put you in contact with her. And Leonisha, if you want to talk to her, what's her name? Tammy. There you go. If you want to talk to Tammy, Leonisha, just email Maria. She'll put you in contact with Tammy. She's a nice person. She'll talk to you about the program she does and how it works. Uh, I don't know where you're located, but she's in Miami, so you're probably in a different place. So. She doesn't care. I promise you. She doesn't care.
I'll drop my email down there. Yep, that's true. Periscope is another one. That's another one. Joe says, Eric, can you speak more about infrastructure plan that's coming out? So, Joe, um, oh, sorry, wait, I got someone right here. Someone. Sorry, hold on, let me bring my man up to the stage. Hey, bro, is that how you say it? You're on mute. You're on mute. Yes, okay. um, you okay. said it perfectly. Right. <laughs> sorry about that. Nah, nah, nah. Um, how you guys doing? Hello, Eric. Hello, Maria. Um, thank you for hey. allowing me to be on this platform. That's everything. No, nah, no, nah, no problem. Thank you for coming up. Coming up. Where are you calling from? Where are you at? Um, so I'm calling from Bronx, New York. Um, okay. The boogie down. Yeah. Right down the block. Um, Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun fact, actually, I'm right down the block from um where Fat Joe and J Lo um, oh. grew up. So there's a lot of history. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> history. History. All right. All right. All right. No, no. I just asked you, you know. You know. I just asked you. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I never been to the Bronx. I've been in Bronx, but I never been to the Bronx. But I know they said oh, they have a big Dominican. Oh yeah. No. Out there. Yeah, they definitely do. Don't come to the Bronx. They, 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 it's not. I didn't like the it. It's nothing in here for you guys. Right. You can pass by. Yeah. You can pass by. You can pass by, like pass by. You know what's funny? I remember yeah. was playing, and it was like Bronx. I'm like, wait, you got way out there on the train to go to the Bronx? You know? So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember seeing it, like, on the train. Like, right. I was like, okay, that's kind of far. That's the last stop to the end. <laughs> You know, <laughs> right? If I, yeah. you know, yeah. you like yeah, that. man, Eric, yeah. if I see you, you know, man. So tell me, tell me what you're doing, what's your business, what you got working on, what you're thinking about, what do you want to do? All right. Um. So my business is um called Badgy NY LLC, and basically what I do is I go into low income communities and I help them with the um college process. So I help them with um signing up for SUNY, um private schools, um state schools, CUNYs, um, which is City University of New York schools. Okay. Um and around like 80% of my students, they go to school debt free. Um because I target low income communities and with me targeting low income communities, they have like um a lot of benefits that they're not aware of and the guidance counselors are not aware of. So I I go into the schools and make them aware of that and get them scholarships. Nice. Man, that's good work, man. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. So I actually got that's into really nice. um, like government. Yeah, you, you know, that's good work. <laughs> thank you. Um, I actually got into government contracting by accident um, doing that because um, for me to uh, provide my services, I have to work with the Department of Education. Yep. Um, so I had gotten uh i have past experience um i probably only had made did a contract so far with the department of education but um now i'm working on my capability statements and um i just heard you guys talk about the sba profile um and that's where i'm at currently um trying to build my sba profile but i'm not exactly sure on um how to build that and i just wanted to see if you guys could help me out with that Oh, newbie question. Ah, uh, that's a newbie question. But that's hey, you know, look, it's newbies on here. I'm sure out of 56 people watching, there's a bunch of newbies watching, and you know, gonna watch later. Uh, so the SBA profile. What I always tell people to do. Oops, sorry. I, I'm no sorry. worries. Yeah, I had my <laughs> stupid. Okay, so um, on the SBA profile, what? So in school, they taught you that that like you know when you look at somebody else's paper and you write down the answer, it's called copying. But as you become adult, right, mm -hmm. we call it modeling, <laughs> right? And then lawyers call it researching, right? So, look, mm -hmm. that stuff they taught you in school don't pay your bills in the real world. You, I think you figured that out, right? Like, hey, man. Uh -huh. hey, hey, don't pay your bills in the real world. So I'm going to teach you some real world stuff. Forget that all that school stuff. So we, call, we model mm -hmm. other successful entities, SBA profiles. So uh, find mm -hmm. someone else that's doing what you are doing 
and uh, that's successfully mm -hmm. doing it. Maybe they're in California, maybe they're in Milwaukee, maybe they're in Florida, and then modeled their profile. Because they understand uh, one of the things that you may not know fully is all the keywords the government's looking for and how they're searching for your capability. Mm -hmm. And that's important to know it. And it's hard for you to know it because you've only, like I said, you've done eight contracts. So someone else who's done 50 or 100 contracts knows when the government's searching for that service, what are they looking for exactly? So I want mm -hmm. you to find out who's your biggest competitors. And they, maybe not in the same state. It could be in other states. Go to their profile mm -hmm. and follow that. I put the two oh, okay. Here. And I can find their profile. Oh, sorry about that. Well, everything's public. So you can find their profile as well publicly. Okay. And <clears throat> so I could go to SBA um, profiles and just type in like, for example, one of my competitors is um, NYU and yeah. they do the same thing I do. So I could just go on to the yeah, SBA. NYU and probably does a lot of other things. So you want someone that just does that. Okay. Yeah, because okay. NYU right. is a university, right? So like NYU does. Yeah. Do university. Yeah. Okay. So if you, you want to find someone that does it, just that only so maybe uh what you might want to do is look at uh what i would say is how do they categorize uh your your service is it is there a special code they use a psc code or something what code do they use um i have um i put it as educational consultant but what on your contracts that you've had in the past what do they what do they put it as Oh, um, I'm not sure. I never actually looked into that. So what you want to find out is how are the how's the government categorizing those contracts? That's where you're going to find okay. out how to do that work. So find out how they're classifying it in the system. That's mm -hmm. how you're going to find other people that win those same type of contracts in other states. And then once okay. you okay. that only do that, then you look at their profiles. Universities and colleges are too big. They they don't they're gonna get those contracts just because they're a university. You you want to find another yeah. small entity like yourself that's just only doing that. Okay, okay. And then the last question that I have for you guys, I believe, is more um tailored towards subcontracting. So in the area I'm in, there's a lot of like um big businesses and um I'm one of those people that go around my area and see what kind of businesses are around and see how I could help them um, with the knowledge that I know. So one of the people that I've met was, is like a big furniture uh, manufacturer and they provide all the furniture to the big companies. Um, and they're a multi-million um, company, but I wanna be their subcontractor, but I, but I don't know how to do that with my company. Do I start a whole nother LLC? Um, or can oh, I use my same LLC? Because your thing is, is Badgy LLC, right? You're Correct, kidding? yes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. That All right. That is not limited to an industry. But I can tell you this, if you can get, if you can become, if you can get a relationship with one of those furniture manufacturers, um, mm -hmm. and I know people that could use your services because the government buys a lot of furniture. And we we cannot find enough entities to provide furniture. Ah, you are speaking <laughs> my language. Hey, you be, you won't be living oh, in the still. You'll be right down in Wall Street. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm being on Bronxville. <laughs> but don't abandon the kids, man. You know, don't leave them kids. Don't leave those kids. You know? Oh no 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I, I feel like I set up a system where I won't abandon the kids because um, every four years, the kids come back to me and I hire them if they don't have a, um, a job. So I give them the opportunity um, for those A-listed students, of course, that um, did well with me. Wow. That's wonderful. No, that's good. You know, um, go ahead, Yasmin. So in the chat, I actually put those two videos of how to fill out your DSDS profile. Um, and also I put the link of how you're going to the link to search for other companies to model. Remember you're modeling. And it took me a while to understand that word that I'm not copying people. And even when I went back to teaching, one of the girls said she, she copied. I'm like, uh, uh we don't copy. We model. You're from modeling. One another. So she actually giggled and it's, it's having that 
change of mindset of that you're you got to learn from people that have been successful in order to become them one. Remember, school teaches you how to be an employee. So they're going to tell you this is negative when they go out and do the same stuff themselves. Like, live. Mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So they do the same thing, but they tell you not to do it because they want you to be the employee, not the owner. So we're, nah. we're, here, we're, here, we're here teaching people how to be owners and business owners and to be a boss. So forget all that school stuff because you're not getting grades. Your grades is your money. And if you don't get money, mm -hmm. you get an F. So I, 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 want nah, you right. days. <laughs> I want you to make it. I appreciate it. No problem, man. No, appreciate it. You know, no. Definitely let us know. And um, in regards to, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh, and my connection is like lagged up. So sometimes I like talk um, ahead of you guys. Um, but in regards, I wanted to ask in regards to emails, if I wanted to contact any of you guys in regards to the furniture, um, where can I get your at email? Service at GovConGiants.com. That's for everybody, including uh, someone else that they didn't see our email. But it, I just put it in there. You could just show it on the screen. Oh. Service lesson, lesson, lesson. All of us. So that's if you want to get someone to uh, to all of us, um, that goes to Eric, Erica, myself, Brandon, Randy, and uh, everybody's going to get service. So somebody's going to see it. That's the email. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you guys. No, no problem. Thank um, you for coming up, man. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm sure a lot of, of people. Course, are you do and if i were you i would put my i would if i were you i would go back in the chat put my email address because i'm guarantee you there's people watching this that want to help you in your mission i guarantee it uh, i so, definitely will I thank you so much information in there so we can we can put it up on the screen and if anybody wants to help you in your mission and what you're doing with the kids in the bronx we definitely want to send them your way because uh we i actually have a guy that used to work at sally may and freddie mac that I would be the first person mm -hmm. to see that we need to talk to because I, I'm pretty sure he would help find a way to connect you and, and help you with some of your furthering what you're doing. Because if you've already got the no. part of education contracts and you're helping the kids with college process, this guy literally was the national spokesperson for Sally May and Freddie Mac. So he's, and he's, he was just, and I, we were on a call with him last night. He would, I'm telling you, he would love to talk to you about what you're doing to see how you could help. I guarantee it. So don't disappear and then be like, man, I you know, these people, I'm not going to reach out. I'm telling you now, I'm not calling you. So if you don't damn me, email me, that's on you. Be, I'll, I'll see you. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No worries at all. <laughs> no worries at all. I'm from the Bronx, so I'll, I'll find you. All right. <laughs> Hey, be good, bro. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you guys. Right, right and going back to talking about how school um, teaches us to be robots in such a way, we're actually talking about it. Yeah. And the funny story is that um, going back to being a teacher, um, the school I was working in, they were going to put uniforms. And my first thought was like, oh, man, I don't want to wear uniforms. I like being my own individual and choosing. Well, at least I get to choose what I wear. And some teachers went automatically just like, man, that's one less thing I have to think about. And like seeing, being a teacher and seeing things and talking to you, it goes back into that we're teaching these kids that there's only one right answer. That's it. There is no if, where, where, how, anything. It's like, I tell you, I ask you something, I'm expecting an answer and I'm expecting it automatically, um, even to the point that we all have to walk in line a certain way. So um, I love schools, and you guys know me. Um, I love being a teacher, but being on the outside and being a small business owner and being a person on my own, you see things a little bit differently now. Um, by the way, I broke. Kevin Williams says, do you have a nonprofit arm? So uh, like I said, I would uh, definitely put my information in the chat, and I'll, I'll put you up in a big screen so people can reach out to you. And again, this is going to go on YouTube. So, like, uh, look, I wrote congratulations. I wrote awesome job. You know, hey, need not be ashamed. So, 
Boogie Down Bronx. So, hey, look, I wrote, I, again, um, you know, drop your email in here so people can reach out to you. So we use modeling for our capability statements. Absolutely, Mike's saying. We use modeling for everything. I usually just Google uh, whatever industry I'm in and capability statement, and I look at the images, and sometimes they have PDF downloads, and I just look at certain things, how they say it, what keywords, what differentiators, and I model it into my own. There you go. By the way, look, Kevin says, I broke, get into the furniture niche, furniture for secure VTC room. And Kevin Williams knows what he's talking about, by the way. He's a successful <laughs> man. A man knows what he's talking about. So uh, he knows what he's talking about. That's Brian said. I got people in the Bronx. See, I wrote, look, there you go. All right, we're going to bring up my next guest, Jay. Which hey, how's it going, Eric? Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. No, I love your NASA shirt. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you did that for me. I'm in Texas, so I guess it's appropriate, right? All right there you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, I'll get right to it. I just got four quick. Uh, I don't need a, a full detailed explanation. Um, I don't want to waste your time or anything, but I do want to just get some critical info from you. I'm the one who had the SD VOSB. Um, I'm just starting out. I don't have uh, really any experience with this or any contracts yet, but um, I have been, I do have a mentor that has a little bit of experience with this. Yeah. Um, so I just got four quick questions here. Uh, okay. My first one, um, what is your advice on uh, joint ventures and things like that? Because I put in the chat earlier about like that EV contract. Obviously, it's going to take uh, a joint venture because I'm not an electrical engineer. But I got a friend who's actually he's in the National Guard. He's in the military, too. Um, he's a helicopter pilot. He works for an engineering firm. He's inquiring to see if they can do uh, something to that effect. Uh, that contract I was looking at was for uh, EV chargers uh, or a proposal to uh like do EV charging stations at every uh, VA location in uh, the U.S. So, uh, what is, what is your advice on that? Like, how do you go about doing that? How do you how do you see yourself? To, and I'm taking notes on my old pad here. Mm -hmm. I always take notes, but so I'm I'm not dueling on you. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, by the way, look uh, just real quick. Why do you like to thank you for your service and also everyone else who served? So just put that out there. Um, oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so now, uh, what is it that you see? Why is it that you want to get in involved in electric vehicle charging stations? Um, I don't know. Well, I, I have a, a Tesla on pre-order. It might take a year or three to get it. Uh, so I, I have a high interest in electric vehicles. Um, and then obviously I'm uh, I'm disabled vet. So I go to the VA. I've been to many VA. I've moved uh, to, to different states. So, um, I, I mean, obviously I don't have, you know, like direct experience and I'm not an electrical engineer, but in order to do this, I would have to partner with somebody because I mean, the scope of this, and like I said, you know, I, I, I I'm starting out with a whale here. Um, and I, I know you guys have been pounding, uh, you know, start out small and work your way up. But I've, uh, I sort of feel that, you know, um, with my sort of my connections and the people I know, especially like my, one of my best friends is an electrical engineer. I might be able to hash something out with him at his company. He's actually checking to see if they might be able to, have the capacity to do this, but he's not sure if they have enough people. So, um, well, what I would say is this uh, going back to your question on joint ventures. So, for me, mm -hmm. uh, I always I think that we should, you know, joint ventures is like a marriage, right? Um, mm -hmm. about teaming, which is like more like dating, to find out mm -hmm. even if you want to go into a joint venture. Because, um, what happens is if you go, you know, going straight into the joint venture, first of all, no one's probably going to want to do that with you, anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. Because first of all, going to a joint venture costs money, right? So you gotta, you gotta. There's an expense with that. But then the mm -hmm. other thing about it, more so than money, is that um, you know you've got to make a commitment to each other of what your roles, responsibilities are. And then mm -hmm. a lot of times, it's particularly in your case, since you're a service aid veteran, you know these things have to be approved by a government entity it has to approve your joint venture. Mm -hmm. so, it's not just like something that you set up and then nobody's going to look at it. You, it actually is going to be scrutinized and there's going to be uh, responsibilities on both parts. Now, if you were just to do a teaming arrangement, which again, if you, if you were here in the beginning, I lost my contract because I didn't submit a teaming arrangement, mm -hmm. venture, just the teaming arrangement, the teaming arrangement document, which again, we have that in our courses and well, 
and it, you could download and find them anywhere. But those mm -hmm. are okay. I'm you know I'm gonna do X. You're gonna do Y. You're gonna do Z. Now, if people don't do it, it's not the end of the world. You know, like no one dies, no one get you know no one gets sued. It's it's kind of like a handshake agreement, but it's in writing. So if there were any exchanges of money or anything like that, then it it is legally binding, right? But mm -hmm. it's not um, it's not detrimental. If, in fact, it doesn't happen, right? So you're not over the top. It's like, hey, we're gonna go into this thing together. We're gonna all put in a good faith effort uh, in the event that we do win something, right? This is the roles, and this is how the money's gonna be divvied up, and blah blah blah. blah. So it's just it's just much easier to start off that way um because you don't really you've never worked with these people in the past and so you don't know how it is when money hits the table and i can tell you i was just on a phone with my best friend two hours that him and another friend went into business together and after they made millions is when the relationship start to strain it's not when you're broke it's when after you made millions of dollars in the pot is when your relationship starts to kind of go this way right because someone feels like they did more work than the other one someone did less work uh, someone else um, may feel like, you know, I don't have enough equity for what I put in, even though you made the money, you know, it just, right. It's your business, but I did all the work for your business. Right. Jake, like you're the service disabled veteran, but if it wasn't for my company, you wouldn't have got that contract. Mm -hmm. You get me? So yeah, exactly. You need to iron out right now. Okay. That's reality of it. But, okay, yeah. and then and, and given the fact that I'm using that contract as an example, what is the quick, I guess, quickest and easiest way to do uh, a source of SOT? Because it's still in that stage right now. Because I think, um, you know, these EV contracts are based off that uh, big, you know, package that's still uh, waiting to be approved by the government. Um, somebody else is here. Like a brochure format? Because that's what basically my mentor is telling me. And the YouTube, are you Joe Prophet on YouTube on the channel? Um, Jake Krause. I'm okay. Okay. So let's go yeah. ask about the EV contract. So we yeah. actually have a company that we work with. I'm gonna pull them up. Hold on. Oh, I was reading people's chat. It says, um, "So be careful when you're using partners." Um, another thing is because um, Leilani made a point. Um, when you have a teaming agreement, you're working together. And also, if you guys are going to be a sub, have a subcontracting agreement. Somebody said, pen on paper, always. Always have a contract in place. Always have an agreement in place. Because like Eric says, once money, everything, everyone is nice. Yeah, we're going to work together, this and that. But once things go into it and people are getting paid or you lost profit or you made more, that's where situations come about it. And our the marriage and the dating thing came from one of our podcast guests, so I'm not gonna take we're not taking credit for it. Um, and it's just the best way. I actually we talked about this in the day course. It's the best way that I understood it because it's one of those things that I didn't understand. But when he said dating, you know, you get to know each other. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, then you know what? It's just an experience. Um, and if you're going into a teaming, a joint venture, that's when the marriage is, that's when something is signed, it's legal, it's binding, and that's where it's more formal. So they, on all of those things, like we said, the teaming agreement, the joint ventures, even like subcontracting packages, we actually have it in our course. And I dropped the, the, the link on our chat a few times. And this month you could save 10% or use the WHM um, code. And I tell a lot of people about our program, Academy 3.0, because right now we, it's more than a course because it's a 25 modules that teaches you everything from the foundation to marketing your business to monetizing your business. And then we meet every Tuesday as you keep hearing, we met on our Tuesday call, we met on our Tuesday call. We do like general Q and A's, we do learning sessions, we do breakout sessions. Um, and we also do, our speakers once a month and they come in and they're specialized in their own field. Like we had Tasha do local and state contracts. Um, this coming week, we're going to do um, Kim Yates, which is she's an expert in FAR. Like she's helped Eric in negotiations. So she is one of those people that knows the FAR in and out. She's an 
um, retired contracting officer. So she knows her stuff. Um, and also we have a son coming in and he's, he's a lawyer. So he knows all the agreements when you're supposed to have things in place and things like that. Um, so we meet every single week, um, we have all 25 modules and um, supplier credit references, you have that. So I truly believe in this program because it's how I learned. Um, like I told everyone, I came knowing nothing. And little by little, you guys see me and I know a little bit more now. And it's just keeps going. Um, and Jeff, he said, get a prenup. Yes, always get that prenup. Yeah. That, that prenup is that agreement. Have things clear, please. Just because at the end of the day, I haven't gotten paid. And me not getting paid after working on contracts and stuff, it sucks. It really sucks. It's like, I told you guys, one of my first contracts, I got paid in less than. So just, um, I'll put it back in the chat, uh, our program, and it's just awesome. And you're part of this community. As you see, we are family, and we joke, we cry, we go through it all together. Yeah. Um, sorry, Jake. I was trying to find. I can't find the name real quickly. Sorry, buddy. But um, I'll, I'll find it. Because you're the second person to ask me about it. But essentially, there is a company right now that is doing electric vehicle charging stations around the country. They've got mm -hmm. the contract to do it. You can look them up. Um, they're a really big company. They're doing it now for the government. However, you can become a supplier for them. And we became a reseller for that entity. So you can become a reseller for them because these other contracts like the VA hospitals and the one that we're on are probably going to go set aside for small businesses. So this large institution that has government past performance can't perform them. So you as a small business, if you become a reseller for them um, or distributor for the company, then that's where you can add value to the whole deal. Because now mm -hmm. your company, what's the name of your company? Uh, Sky Haven LLC. All right, so Sky Haven then now is a reseller for a national EV charging uh, distribution company that has mm -hmm. government performance, you can now bring that to the table, Matt, and then now you've got something of value to add, and then your buddy brings a charge point. That might be them. That might be them, charge point. That might be that company. Hold on. Is that them? Let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's actually funny you say that because I contacted ChargePoint, I contacted Volta, and I contacted Beam, all based out of California. And nobody answers their phone there, so I don't know. Maybe they're just too busy or something. <laughs> so. is it, is that them? But remember, just because someone doesn't answer for their phone the first, second, or third time, like you have to. We, like we talked about it yesterday. Stop them. Email, LinkedIn, phone, chat. Do it all, because um, Colin told us about a, 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 I think it's a contracting officer or a small business liaison, that it took him two years to get a phone call back. Two years for a phone call. Two years. So, yeah, sometimes you have to be that little mat in your ear that just keeps annoying you that at some point you're just like, okay, what do you need? Um, and then, and then I guess uh, my last two quick questions here, uh, quick fire is, uh, what are they uh, from for my type of business arrangement with being a SDVOSB? Uh, what are the easiest contracts? Um, I heard you talking about, you know, you started out with like doing a flooring thing uh, to get into. And then my last question real quick is like it was really it was like pulling teeth to get insurance for my business. Because, you know, basically, if I'm doing, you know, partnerships and whatnot, you know, I just need the the basic insurance. But it's like, you know, they have all these questions and everything like that you know you know are you gonna do you have this many people and and blah 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 and i was like, like no i'm just a small business starting out and it was like pulling teeth to get insurance so yeah those are my my two last two quick questions is easiest contracts with my uh sd vosb and then the insurance and right, i appreciate so, it once again so you guys are right it is charge point mm -hmm. here and so I mean, you guys call, but I mean, this is the site that actually that we went through mm -hmm. and um, they pushed us through our application. I'll drop this in the chat for anyone that wants to see it. Uh, Joe Prophet says, I joined the affiliate program, which we charge based out of Colorado. So I'm at, so we are actually a charge point distributor or partner. 
partnership opportunities right here. Distribution partner, value added reseller. We did it. I, I mean, I'm telling you, something we did. I, I can remember. It, and so it's funny because, you know, I can't even remember the name because my guys are the ones that did it. But we literally set up. And uh, so now, again, you can, you can do one of these. I think we're a distribution partner. And so we, we're leveraging that to go because again these are going to be small business contracts so they didn't even know about these programs that came out so we actually the ones that informed them about the programs and that's how we got involved because there a lot of times i think what happens is we forget that they, they're not necessarily watching all this opportunities because they're busy installing units right they're not monitoring sam and these and those programs i'm telling you they're not i'm, I'm telling you like that's a, those are, are that again when i always tell people that's when we, when we look at things, our brains are trained to go to the negative or the the bad. So we're like, oh, they already saw that. They know about this. They got to know about this program. I'm telling you, when I, when again, just because they didn't answer, one person didn't answer, we got on and we've never done electric vehicle station in our life. Zero stations. Zero. So if I, if it were me, Okay, this is what I would do. Remember this. One of the things I tell everybody is go to site visits. You ever heard me say that, Jake? Go to a job site visit? Or are you new to the channel? I'm new to the channel. I just found you uh, this morning, actually. Oh, and I you, saw you pop up live. All right, <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Glad you jumped out here. But one of the things that we talked about, if you go back to last week's live session, we mentioned, oh, two weeks ago, we mentioned how do you break into the government space, right? So again, one of the questions you asked me was what's easiest contract for VA veterans? For me, the easiest contract for veterans is VA hospitals because they're going to give you contracts that I can't take, like I can't get. YC Lawson that was on here uh, earlier, she built up the courage. She mentioned this in a call the other day. She built up the courage to actually go into her VA facility and ask to talk to some of the contracting folks. If you go in there, Jake, and say you have a business, right? And you actually go to the hospital, via hospital, and say, "Hey, I've got a business. This is what I do. I like to provide services and goods." They will sit down and talk to you. They will talk to you, Jake. They will tell you the easiest contract, and your in your area. So yeah, I got friends that work at the VA, so I I, 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 I could easily find you to talk to. You don't need your friends. You personally could go in without your friends and say that you have a business and that you want to talk about contract opportunities and they will walk you in. Get your friends. You don't need to, there's no, you don't need somebody to walk you through. I'm telling you, because let me tell you why I say forget your friends, because a lot of times our friends, right, they're going to think they're doing us a favor. And so they may not, they might put you to somebody that they know, not the person that makes the decisions. Mm -hmm. So, Forget the friends. You yourself go and tell you want to meet with contracting folks. You go down to the VA hospital and you say, hey, I have a business. I'm starting out. I'd like to be working with the VA hospital. Uh, I'm new to this. Be honest. Be transparent. Uh, this is my background. This is my experience. These, you know, I've got some relationships. What do you guys think? You know, what are some opportunities that exist? My brother did that. Okay. And my brother is, you know, again, he he's been overseas. He was in there when they when they set up those uh when they had when they was over and where was it at where they set everything on fire and it was smoke through the air and he was oh. on those tanks. They were out there on the on the navy ships and all the everything was on smoke. Kuwait was that Kuwait? Yeah, Kuwait. Kuwait. Yeah, Kuwait. Like nineties. Yeah. Ninety. Yeah, he was over there that time. So um, um, he just went in there and they said, well, we do have this project coming out and this project and this project. They literally just rambled off projects that they have coming out. And nobody, like even some of the biggest companies in the country can't go in and take those projects from you. So as a service disabled veteran, it doesn't matter how much skills I have, how great I am, how good I talk or how great somebody else looks. We can't take that from you. You're, that's the best place to go for you. For those mm -hmm. That's the absolute best place to start service a veteran, I would not look anywhere else. I wouldn't go to city. I wouldn't go local. I'd go straight to the VA hospital. And they may connect you with someone else that will that can partner up with you that is already doing work there that's looking for someone like you to take under their wings. And so, again, I would start right there. All right. I appreciate yeah, it. 
back to, yeah, go back to charge point because I can tell you here um, that we became, what I was saying earlier was, so for everyone listening about those electric vehicle stations, if you go to a site where the, where the government's having a meeting, so Jake, look for opportunities for bidding these charging stations. If you go to a site visit, right, when you go to the actual site visit, you're going to meet people that are working on these projects. If you go to a place where ChargePoint is at and meet a human, a person, then you can talk to them and tell them that you want to become a distributor to go after contract opportunities. That person is going to put you in contact. They're going to get you past this website stuff. All right, Joe Prophet, the same thing for you. Try to go someplace where they're at and meet a person. That person is going to walk you to the office of, like, they're going to say, send it here or send it to that guy, and then they'll get it to approve. But as long as you're dealing with email and trying to call a 1 800 number, you're dead in the water. You're just another person. Not even a person, you're just another, you know, 10 digit number. So that's what I would do. All right. Okay. No. And then uh, on the insurance, do you have any advice on that? Getting the, because I went through with the local agent and I just got like general, like product insurance. Because um, obviously, if I'm some of these contracts, go ahead. General liability, mm -hmm. errors and omissions. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't have my policy in front of me, but it's funny, Jake. I just met with an insurance guy today, and I said, we need to come up with an pro insurance product for all of these contractors so then they don't have to worry about what they're missing. I literally mm -hmm. just had a meeting today about that. I just, mm -hmm. just um, but definitely errors and omission. You want liability. Um, see, if you, you know, okay, so what would I, what, what, on that note, this is what you can do because I don't have everything off the top of my head. If you look at uh, the local city that you're in, mm -hmm. they have insurance requirements. Pull from that list of requirements and get those th those coverages. Okay. That's yep, a good that point. sounds like great advice. It's perfect, actually. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Whatever the local city requires, guts, mm -hmm. get those coverages. And that'll help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it, Derek. Thanks a lot for the advice. No, no. Listen, I'm glad you came on. I'm glad you found us today. So that's that's pretty neat. That's pretty awesome. So, you know, I'm glad. Look, you know, I'm glad you stopped in and you shared and you weren't afraid to share. And, you know, we appreciate it. And like I said, thank you for your service. And if, hey, you better go to the hospital and ask for some contracts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I have to go anyway. It's in, within the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I definitely will. Right. <laughs> Two birds with one stone. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it, Eric. You guys have a great night. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, and and you're right, Charles Gill. Insurance focus on government contracts. That's exactly what I want to do. Um, is create a product so that that way because we um we have someone that I know that's going through some 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 uh, some legal things right now, and if he had the right type of insurance policy, that would have helped him tremendously. Uh, avoid a lot of this, this stuff that he's going through that um, legal lease thing. So, no, no, good stuff. Uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty content. I think we had a good night tonight, everyone. Thank everyone for joining. I uh, hope we were able to answer a lot of questions for folks. Make sure to like, to share. Also, make sure, I haven't said this, but make sure to follow me on IG, eCoffee, that's on the screen. That's on Instagram where we're sharing like more personal stuff and also where uh, we're doing a lot of recent events and relevant things here is long form content. IG is quick first, right? So you'll find out like, for example, uh, we talked about this morning. I went on IG and we discussed the administration side of the executive order on crypto and what that looks like and how that's going to affect us. So, um, yeah. I, we had fun. Uh, you got Maria. Got come on. No one asked Maria any questions. I'm appalled, <laughs> right? You, you, you got Maria sitting right here. No one came in and asked Maria. And then Maria. Erica saying some guys hounding her. <laughs> that the only person who's people are hounding to talk to Maria. Now I got to bring Maria up here, and nobody wants to talk to Maria. So. It's okay. I'll have better stories next time.
time. There I'll bring go. jokes. Yeah, there you go. Marie's got to bring jokes. No, no problem. Thank you, as always. Um, my man, Kevin, thanks for showing up, brother. You know, S. Bryant, thanks for, you know, putting in your comments. And we appreciate you guys. So, hey, thank you, as always. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, follow us on IG uh, or wherever you find us at. And uh, we'll be talking really soon. And actually, one thing that we're going to do probably in the next couple of weeks is we're going to talk about our new NFT project that's releasing this month. We're very excited about the new NFT project. Uh, in fact, let me see. I think if I can pull it up, the website my son sent me, I could share it. I'll give you guys a sneak peek for those that stuck with us throughout the night. I'm very excited for them. I'll um, show you guys this project. Go ahead. Mine are being minted, so I'm excited that every time I go on OpenSea, it flashes all the little different kinds. And it's kind of like Christmas because you don't know which one you're getting yet. So you keep checking it. And I think it's a pretty cool co um, concept. I'm actually going to give some to my niece and my nephew as well. So this is uh, this is a sneak preview of our NFTs that are launching. So as you can see, there's a little team coming up. Look at that. All <laughs> right. So uh, it tells you our official launch and uh, the price, how you get a free NFT, how to get whitelisted, how to use your NFTs. So yeah, no, check us out. We've got our Discord open. Um, and so we'll be minting this month. We'll also be, if, by the way, if for those of you who purchased the 3.0, you do receive a free NFT. So if you did purchase, you receive a free NFT. Also, those who are in PAL, receive free NFTs. Uh, you see the name, Ostaboo? So we actually took the name Ostaboo uh, because again, we're government contractors and that's what we do. So this is, uh, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. This is the beta site, but if you want to check it out, I'll just drop the link in here on the beta site and uh, you can take a look at it. But yeah, we've got a lot of good things coming up. We're having a lot of fun. And uh, so we're, we're happy to share this and we want everyone to be a part of the community. So look, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sticking with us. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, share. And all that good stuff. And by the way, if you do not, if you don't have MetaMask or you don't know what MetaMask is, then uh, we'll be we'll be talking about that, what that looks like, and how to do it in upcoming content and videos. Because if the government, in fact, does what they say they're going to do with the executive order that they signed today, where the government's looking at creating their own cryptocurrency, it's going to behoove all of you to to be involved. So really, if you don't learn this stuff now, you're going to find yourself on the back end of what's going to be the next revolution in the world. And so like, once again, you'll be chasing your tails and trying to figure out why is gas 10 bucks a gallon. And it's really, it's not inflation, it's deflation of the dollar. And so you're going to be like, how do I supplement it? And so again, you know, a lot of times people watch this stuff and we've been talking about government contracts even before COVID happened. Then COVID hit, and then you're like, oh, I want to learn about government contracts. <laughs> I told you about government contracts before COVID hit. I'm telling you about NFTs and Web3 before this stuff becomes really popular, really big, and the token, then it's going to be too late. So thanks as always. See you. Have a good night. Buenas noches.